Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So a couple weeks or so ago, I in one of my videos, I mentioned that I got a new computer and I was going to do a review of it. Now, I've decided not to do a technical review of it because there are plenty of them out there. I ended up buying a, an Apple iMac Pro, the base model with the eight cores and the 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there. If you want to see the raw performance, go head to head with other, you know, MacBook Pro, iMac Pro, uh, iMac type things. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to talk about my experiences with this particular computer and, and why you may or may not want to get it. So I made a little list here and I'm going to kind of walk down my experience and kind of save the some of the negative stuff to the end. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, let's talk about reboot speed. That's kind of a, a I don't want to say a daily activity, but it's, it's something you do every once in a while, reboot speeds. The MacBook Pro was a very, very quick in rebooting. Five to ten seconds, you reboot, it would reboot. Um, and everything would be good. This computer, you reboot, it thinks a long time, it pauses a long time, it pops up the Apple logo, and it spends a lot of time in the boot process. Uh, and so I would say the boot times are probably around a minute on average, uh, sometimes longer, sometimes less long. Uh, there's a couple times already, I've only had the computer now for about a month and change where I've had to hard reboot it with a power switch, which is something I only had to do maybe three times with my MacBook Pro in the six years that I owned it. So I'm disappointed in that, I really am. So it, it's curious to me why the boot times are so much longer, it's the same operating system. The only thing I can figure is because the mobile computer on the MacBook Pro, it was caching a bunch of stuff in memory and it really wasn't rebooting as much as it was pulling things out of memory. I'm not sure, but that's one thing to know. Uh, you sh I've rebooted this computer. This is the other disappointing, another disappointing thing. I've rebooted this computer more times um, in the first month than I think I rebooted my MacBook Pro the entire time that I owned it in six years uh, for lots of different reasons. Software install issues, compatibility issues, it, uh, applications were locking up and weren't acting properly. So um, I've had a lot of experience with the rebooting. I don't know why, but it just uh, I would say that's a that's something to consider. I'm not going to say it's a negative, but maybe I got spoiled with a MacBook Pro. Who knows? Um, next thing, daily operations, launch speed of applications. I was expecting this brand new computer with the super fast storage and lots of memory to launch much, much faster for all the applications. And what I would say is it launches faster, it's not much, much faster. Uh, the, some of the Apple applications, Mail and, and Safari and and those things launch more quickly. You, you click the icon and they're up in, your, up in the screen within a matter of you know a second or two. Uh, I was expecting Fusion 360 to launch in significantly faster. It doesn't. It does launch faster, maybe two times faster. Um, but I was expecting more of like a 5x increase in launch speed, um, anecdotal, right? So that to me is a little bit disappointing, uh, a little bit, but not, not tremendously. Day-to-day -day use, I don't use Fusion maybe on a daily basis, but I launch a lot of applications obviously. Um, and so it does make things go faster. Uh, next, two big important things, uh, which is uh, video save time and video render time. I'll talk about render time first. Uh, the MacBook Pro was getting a little long in the tooth with render times. It was taking a little bit longer. Um, so that's a, one thing I was really excited about this computer getting this. Hopefully it would be much faster. Um, I, I'm not that impressed with the render times in uh, ScreenFlow or in Camtasia. I have not yet done any uh, testing with Final Cut Pro. Uh, the, re the video render times essentially for every one minute of video recording, I'm seeing essentially one minute of render times. I remember the MacBook Pro being slightly larger, um, uh, but I don't remember waiting really all that long. I was really expecting much faster render times on this computer given the storage and the memory and processors and the cores but I'm not seeing it. And, and so it's something I'm gonna have to dig into. Now, save time, uh, video save time specifically for a very large file for maybe a, you know, a four, five, six, seven, ten 10 gigabyte video file. The save times are significantly faster. I would, I would safely say 10 times, maybe even a hundred times faster. When I would save maybe a, a six minute video on the MacBook Pro, it'd probably take usually around four to six to maybe close to 10 minutes just to save it. Um, on this brand new iMac Pro, uh, it's, it's, I, I hit command save, uh, and it, it, it blips <laughs> and the file saved. It, it, it is very, very fast. I, I 
I don't know if that's the, the much faster storage. The storage is, is much, much, much faster. Uh, or if it's just some other thing going on. But um, I'm super happy and super excited by that. Big, large files save very, very quickly. And that's a good thing that saved me a ton of time. Uh, so the last thing I'll mention is just the overall performance of Fusion 360. Uh, really, the performance of Fusion was one of the primary reasons I decided to get a new computer. Uh, the uh, use of complex SVGs, the complex tool pass in CAM, um, and the rendering of meshes is something that I've been struggling with on the MacBook Pro and really, really drove me to get the new computer. Um, so far, uh, I'm not seeing a significant improvement at all in any of that. Uh, Fusion is still locking up when rendering tool pass, it's still locking up when, when trying to manipulate uh, large SVGs. Uh, it's, it's, it's gotta be the Fusion software is the only thing I can figure. This is an eight core, 32 gigs of RAM computer with a modern processor that is, you know, uh, ostensibly much faster, burstable at a minimum. Um, and it's just, it seems about the same. Uh, it, you know, it's a little bit faster, don't get me wrong, it's not the same speed. Um, but I pulled up the exact same design file on the MacBook Pro and I pulled, up, it, pulled it up here on the iMac Pro. Um, and the experience was essentially the same. Um, it was just total lockup, gridlock, the little spinning um, beach ball thing going on. So very disappointed in that, not because of this computer, but because I think it's, uh, I think it's the Fusion software. And uh, I'm toying with maybe putting in a bug report on that because it's just, it really is unacceptable. And I'm super disappointed not only in Fusion, but in the kind of overall performance. And so uh, the, those are the kind of the big highlights. Um, now let me kind of just switch gears a little bit and talk about my experience of getting from the MacBook Pro to the iMac Pro. I want to, I, I want to, this is a rant. I just, I, I'm going to put this out there. This is a rant. I'm going to try and keep it short, but I, I got to, I got to do the, the face palm Apple. What the heck were you thinking? Um, so let's first talk about. 20, 2012 MacBook Pro converting to a 2000 and late model 2017 um, iMac Pro. Um, so I first tried to do Apple Migration Assistant over Wi-Fi. Total failure. Um, it copied, I would say, maybe a third of the information and failed. It just locked up, never came back to life. I read the little instructions. They said it might be better to plug it into the Ethernet. So uh, I have my Ethernet adapter here somewhere. <laughs> so my MacBook Pro doesn't have an Ethernet port, so I have the $30, I believe, Ethernet adapter. MacBook Pro plugged in Ethernet, iMac uh, on Wi-Fi. Failed completely. Same output, same as going Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi. Now, I knew Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi wasn't going to be good and every, all, the, all the message reports back that up. So uh, next I tried, okay, let's plug both of them into an Ethernet port. So I got this guy. Fortunately enough, this computer has an actual Ethernet port, a 10 gig Ethernet port, plugged them both into wired Ether. Uh, really, the only thing that was between them was the was the bridge. Uh, it's, it's not even the router; it's going through the through the bridge. Um, totally failed. <laughs> Uh, it got farther along. It, it ran for only eight hours <laughs> instead of the the twelve or fourteen hours the first one ran and failed. Uh, so, and look, we're we're talking about um, one hundred and sixty nine gigabytes worth of information. So, uh, it, it miserable, miserable experience. Uh, so, uh, I read on the Apple boards that, uh, and, and as well as Apple's own instructions that if I were to buy this magical cable. This is a uh, Thunderbolt cable that if I plugged the two, two computers together with Thunderbolt, it would go faster, significantly faster, and more likely to succeed. So I bought said cable. Um, I tried to plug this into my old computer, which I did. Um, and then I tried to plug this into my new computer, which I couldn't because this is the Thunderbolt 2 cable, not a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Turns out a Thunderbolt 3 cable looks like this. Compliments of the $40, $30 adapter to take my Thunderbolt 2, convert it to Thunderbolt 3, otherwise known as USB-C. So let's do the math here. To get the migration to work properly, I needed my $29.99 adapter here 
for Ethernet. I needed my, I believe, uh, $30 or $40 cable and my $30 adapter. So let's say $30, $30, and $30. $90 of stuff to migrate my computer. And this stuff is currently useless. Don't need it anymore. Won't ever need it again. In fact, can't even use two of the three with this computer because it doesn't have a Thunderbolt 2 port. Thank you, Apple. For the love of God, why would you do that? So fix migration assistant. Make it work properly. Don't require stupid additional cables. It's annoying and painful and expensive and ridiculous. You know what? I, I am a big believer of the Apple ecosphere. Things do work better together. In this particular case, you're screwing your customers, you're screwing the consumers, um, and it's unacceptable. Um, unfortunately, you screwed me, you got my money, and now I get to use a brand new computer and be a little bit bitter about the experience, which is very unfortunate because I was super excited about this computer, and I still am. I'm just bitter about the experience to get there. So, end of rant. Okay, so... Look, I know this is not my normal videos um, and we'll get back to the normal making soon. I have some projects. Uh, where is it? I have some projects coming up. Let me do this, do that. There you go. <laughs> um, have some projects coming up. So it'll be exciting. It'll be fun. Um, so stay tuned. But um, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, any, any Apple haters, any Apple lovers, feel free to weigh in. Um, share the video, like the video, give it a thumbs up, whatever. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I've noticed that 98.6% uh, of my viewers are not subscribers. That's unfortunate. Please choose to subscribe. Um, if you really love this video and you're subscribing for videos like this, I, I, I'll give you a spoiler alert. I don't do a lot of these. But, um, but if you really hated this video and you want to get back to the old videos, uh, go ahead and subscribe. All right, that's it. Thanks. Appreciate everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.